Hi there. Today you'll learn about one of the most dangerous enemies of farmers and their fields, the locust. You'll also find out what happens when a swarm of hungry locusts meets an equally hungry praying mantis. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a locust? Locusts are so omnivorous they can even chew through a plastic terrarium net. And that's just the beginning. A swarm of locusts can number in the hundreds of millions and migrate over vast distances. Locusts have two phases, solitary and gregarious. In their swarming phase, massive groups can affect up to 20% of the Earth's land surface, harm the livelihoods of a tenth of the world's population, and pose a serious threat to global food security. Their swarms can be extremely dense and highly mobile, covering up to 150 kilometers a day with the help of favorable winds. To show you how voracious locusts are, I'll toss just one sprig of dill into this terrarium. Almost instantly, they begin devouring it at incredible speed. This is exactly how they consume entire crops across huge areas. Locusts have even been mentioned in the Bible. These insects may look harmless at first glance, but in seconds they finish that little branch of dill. And here we've got only about 20 of them. Now imagine thousands or even hundreds of thousands. So what happens if we put a praying mantis in with this swarm of locusts? Swarms vary greatly in size, from a single square kilometer to over a thousand. At first, the mantis doesn't realize what's going on, but it's already acting cautiously. After all, the locusts are about the same size as it is. A few seconds later, the mantis tries to flee but fails. Its behavior strikes me as rather strange. Eventually, it manages to grab onto the surface and stand up, all while the locusts are watching closely. While this is happening, let me share a few more facts. As I said, locust swarms can stretch over square kilometers. Each square kilometer can contain 40 to 80 million adult locusts. Each insect can eat its own weight in plant matter every single day. You can imagine the devastation this causes to agriculture and food supplies in affected regions. Controlling an outbreak can take years and cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Locusts are found in about 30 countries but during major outbreaks, they can spread across as many as 60. Just one swarm per square kilometer can eat as much food in a day as 35,000 people. If left unchecked, locusts cause not only widespread crop losses, but also food shortages for livestock. There are many reasons why fighting locusts is difficult. Swarms cover vast, remote, and hard to reach areas. Sometimes these regions are also conflict zones making pest control operations unsafe. Swarms can cross multiple national borders, requiring complex international coordination. And many countries at risk lack the infrastructure or resources to monitor and respond effectively. Still, these countries must always have trained staff and tools ready to fight locust outbreaks. Now you know much more about this pest. Meanwhile, back in the terrarium, the mantis has settled in and even grabbed one of the locusts but its behavior still seems odd to me. It's moving slowly, unlike its usual sharp, sudden strikes. For example, it just let go of the locust and is simply watching it. The locust in turn carefully backs away, almost as if hypnotizing the mantis. A bit later, the mantis hides against the green dill stem, blending in perfectly. I think now it's ready to hunt. On its next attempt, however, the mantis actually seemed frightened of the locust. Honestly, I can't explain this. If you know why a mantis might be afraid of locusts, let me know in the comments. A few minutes later, the mantis finally manages to catch one and starts eating. This time, it holds on tightly and doesn't let go, while the locust desperately tries to escape. The mantis begins by biting into its head, not randomly, but to immobilize its prey. Locusts, by the way, also have strong jaws that could easily snap a mantis's leg, but for some reason, they don't use this ability. So can praying mantises help fight locusts? Personally, I don't think so. A single swarm per square kilometer contains far more locusts than mantises could ever handle. If one mantis struggles so much with just a single locust, it's pointless to expect them to control entire swarms. Nowadays, locusts are actually popular as live feed in pet shops, often used to feed frogs and reptiles. While the mantis was busy finishing its meal, Another locust stood nearby watching. At one point, one raised its front legs in a strange way. I have no idea what that meant. 
But for the mantis, just one locust is enough food for a couple of days. In some countries, people even eat locusts. Personally, I definitely pass on that delicacy. Later, while the mantis was still feeding, I noticed another locust trying to scare it away. A very odd and unusual behavior. Could locusts actually try to protect each other? And why was it moving its wings like that? If you have any theories, share them in the comments. Even with half its head gone, the locust still kept moving, making it hard for the mantis to hold on. But it did its best not to let go. I hope this video was interesting and informative for you. That's all for now. See you next time.